Hello, and welcome to another video. Now this is another commentary-esque video, and if you've read the title then you already know what I'm talking about today. I'll be talking about war paints and how I initially thought they would have worked, and how I think they should work, personally. This is all opinion, so please keep that in mind as we go through. So on the second day of the Jungle Inferno release, after they released the trailer, Valve revealed war paints among with a few other items that they'll be adding within Jungle Inferno. This is an extension of skins which they introduced in the Gunmetal update, and these could be claimed through either a war paint case or one of the keyless cases that you can claim using like, the contract tickets when you complete your contract in Jungle Inferno using the con tracker. When it was revealed, I thought that you'd be able to apply it to an existing weapon that you already owned. Say you own like a strange black box and you got the cardboard skin, you could automatically apply that cardboard skin to that strange black box while keeping the kills and whatnot. However, I was mistaken. And I'm sure by now if you've had a war paint in your inventory at one point, you should do you get one at Christmas, then you know that they create an entirely new weapon instead of just being able to be applied straight on to an already existing weapon you own. This is uh, not the way I would have worked it, personally. I would have worked it in a similar vein to a festivizer. This was much to my disappointment as I had brought a strange degreaser prior to the Jungle Inferno re release because they released this a couple of days before they dropped Jungle Inferno. So when I'd bought the strange degreaser, I had planned to get a skin and apply it to the degreaser and use that as my main weapon. Because obviously you could skin degreasers now, they'd shown you that you could skin most weapons in the game as opposed to a few like stock weapons originally. Obviously you can't skin promotional weapons as they are promotional and they need to stay in that state so you can see the game they've been influenced in. But most weapons you could skin, and one of those was the degreaser. So I'd bought this strange degreaser ready for Jungle Inferno to drop. However, not being able to skin it, I've still made use of the weapon, it's still my main weapon I use as py on Pyro, so... Either way it worked out for me. I still hold the idea that you should have applied it to an already existing item you had. This is how they should have implemented war paints. Allowing any weapon you already own to be skinned. So say you owned a specific skin, that wasn't strange, but you had a strange weapon lying around, say you had like, you had a minigun, a strange minigun, and you wanted to apply the Bovine Blaze Maker Mark II skin to it, but it wasn't a strange skin. In my mind, you just apply the Bovine Blaze Maker Mark II to the minigun, and boom, you have a strange Bovine Blaze Maker minigun. However, that is not how they did it. I do feel though that if the TF team implemented it this way it would up the price of strange weapons something which i think should happen anyway because they track kills and yet they're pretty cheap i know they get more expensive with more common weapons used but you could pick up like strangers for like six pence or at least you could i think the prices have gone up since those days but you can pick them up for like under 50p on the market it's insane this was what i considered when i picked up my strange degree so i thought i'll get in early before the prices go up and I'll claim that, that weapon I want to use, however that never happened. But what about strange wall paints? As you know you can unbox wall paints in strange quality and then when you apply them to, or when you redeem them I guess, they become a strange weapon. Or they could be used on weapons that aren't of strange quality, such as genuines, uniques, vintages, etc. Turning them into pseudo strangers with the skin. I say pseudo strange as they would be used in a similar vein to how festivizers work. While they give the weapon the look of a festive weapon, they're not actually festive weapons, they're quote unquote festivized, as opposed to being a festive weapon. You could tell if a weapon's festivized or festive by the name. If it's got the lights on and it has festive in the name, then it's a, it's a standard festive weapon. But if it doesn't have festive in the name, but still has the lights, then it's a festivized weapon, and it usually says underneath like the name and the level and stuff if it's festivized or not. In my mind, these strange war paints would create strangeified weapons, so the name doesn't say strange, but they are strange, so they're strangeified. So they would keep their quality text color, say vintage is a nice blue, it would also it'll be a blue textured weapon, 
but it would also attract kills, essentially. And if you don't have the weapon with the skin you'd like, then it would just create it like it does normally. This is all personal opinion though, and I have a few war paints that are just chilling my backpack collecting dust. They're not really doing anything, they're just there. I could sell them for like six pence, but no one would buy them because they're like well worn and battle scarred and stuff. But I feel if the if they had, could be applied to pre existing weapons that I already owned, I probably would have used them because I could just have weapons that I already owned just be skinned for the hell of it, you know? I'm getting to a point where I like to use strange weapons on all my classes and all the main weapons I use should be strange so I can track how many kills I do. That's how I like to play TF2 and unfortunately I can't do that without having to buy a strange skinned weapon which costs more than a standard strange when some weapons I'd like to be skinned. I recently purchased this cardboard box Tomislav. Well this cardboard box, strange cardboard box and I decided to put it on a Tomislav because I haven't used the Tomislav but I'd like to use it more, you know? People often consider it the better minigun, which I've used it before and I must say it's kind of fun. However, this is all my personal opinion and hands down to the way I play TF2 and stuff. Maybe there are unforeseen consequences of doing wall paints this way, so I'm not sure. But what, what do you guys think? You're here listening to this video, listening to me go on about how wall paints were done wrong in my opinion, despite not being a game developer in the slightest. So uh, how would you do it? What do you think? Do you agree with how I'm putting this across, you know, applying it to already existing weapons you have? Or do you think they've the way they've done it is the correct way to do it? Creating an entirely new item from that war paint? Uh, if you have any ideas, you know, just put them down below. I'd like to start a little discussion up in the comments, you know, see what other people have to say on this topic. Obviously, like and subscribe, all that YouTube spiel. You've heard it a million times from a million different YouTubers. So, yeah. I'll see you in my next video. Adios. <laughs>